So we are, uh, it is March 7th, it is freezing in New York today, maybe 20, 25 degrees freezing. We are on the way to Portfolio's new offices, Random House at 1745 Broadway. We've got a beautiful radio tour happening from kind of 8.30 a.m. to noon. And so we'll be calling into Denver, Chicago, LA, all the live radio morning shows. Then after that, we've got a nice break, which will be nice to catch up on sleep. And then the book launch tonight at the New York University Bookstore from 6 to 7 p.m. So I think we'll have a lot of fun there. I'm a little bit nervous right now because this is the first time that portfolio, when we walk in, will tell me what book sales look like. And so I'll get to see quickly if they're excited or not. Now, again, it stays between you and I, but um, if they're really excited about it, then I'm going to use that leverage and put my next proposal in front of them because they have a 30 day right of first refusal. When you sign a big book deal, the author, the, the publisher always asks for that. So by the way, they should expect that from me because the book is about negotiating when you have the most leverage. So if they read the book, they know I'm going to be doing this. We'll see what happens. I'm one of their authors. So these aren't these aren't all radio programs. Some of these are podcasts built in. That's great. That's great. Um, so everything on here that says live, though. So let's say, for example, this first one's going to be with McGraw in St. Louis, Missouri. I mean, I'm literally going to open on my computer, St. Louis, Missouri, local paper. Okay. So I know the headlines, like right now, relevant to that space. I'm going to try on the spot to tie those headlines into the book concept. McGraw, Kelly, good to, good to be with both of you guys. I better figure out a way to sell something online. So I pre-sold Facebook fan pages from my dorm room, wearing my Christmas boxers my ex-girlfriend gave me under my bed, and we had a ton of fun. I pre-sold $70,000 worth of that stuff, and I put the income statement from that year on page six in the book where we broke $939,000 in sales. Fan pages are like, you know, you guys got it for the station, right? People can go like your Facebook page, and when you guys post updates, like, you know, I think Lewis Reed just won five awards last night, but still got his victory. You'd put that story up on your page, you get a lot of likes and comments. Well, we'd help people get more engagement on their Facebook pages. Well, by the way, these are great strategies, right? These are great marketplaces that have been built over a long period of time, and it's a fluid market. So, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that strategy. The trick is, you know, a lot of people are thinking about launching info products or online products or, or even physical goods. Before you spend money, McGraw, on getting your supply chain in order and marketing and sales and a website, you want to... The, concept here is you want to pre-sell your product. And I show you the script that I use for my dorm room on page 18 to pre-sell product. And that first pre-sale landed me a $700 order back on October 5th, 2010. Now I'm 29 today, so I was, you know, you do the math. I was 21 back then. Jeremy, thank you. Hello. So, so I mean, I think one of the important things was is as I was building the, the, this process up is I put together a system for my podcast that allowed me to take the per episode production time and money down from 250 bucks to $29 an episode. And that exact process I put on page 41 of the book where down to the names of the freelancers I hired, right? A guy named Aaron used to do my episodes. Uh, I then also have um, a guy named Sam doing audio editing, um, people writing headlines, and I pay a couple dollars per episode for this, and the margins are incredible. On page 45, you see a sample sponsor agreement we had executed. You know, these things go for 12 months. They're 15 grand a month. That's 180 grand. That's one sponsor for the year. We do many sponsors. So your per episode cost is like 30 bucks, and you're making five, six grand per episode. The margins are great. And so taking hold of your own future like this, I think, is what every college student, every dorm room student, every person, every mother, father listening right now should do for themselves if they're stuck in corporate and not enjoying their life. Well, it's ridiculous. And these are people that have their hairbrush stuck so far up their butt. They think they're so unique. It's ridiculous. You know, what wins is execution. You give 10 people the exact same idea, one will end up broken on the street. One will end up as a self-made millionaire, and maybe one might end up as a hundred millionaire, right, from the same thing, because execution is what counts. And once these people get off their soapbox, they're holier than thou, I don't want to copy somebody else, it's not ethical, blah, 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 you realize the quickest way to wealth, if you're starting with no money, is actually to copy your competitors aggressively, quickly, and just faster than ever before. And a good example of this, I don't know if you have the book, do you have the book in front of you by chance? Go to page 198. You're going to love this. This talks to our audiences very well. Page 199, you see Business Apps by Andrew was launched in 2010. 
Okay. They had at the time of the writing of book 16 months ago, about $1.5 million a month in recurring revenue. In 2017, revenue was 18 million bucks. One of their top affiliates, Jeremy, was a guy named Ian Blair in San Diego. Well, Ian was driving so much business, he said, you know what? Instead of being an affiliate and only getting 30% from business apps, I should build my own copy and get back 70% of the margin. Why? Because Ian was the distribution channel to business apps. In today's day and age, a distribution channel is more valuable than the actual product. And so Ian did the smart thing. He built an exact replica of business apps, doubled down on his distribution centers and, and channels, and now he's doing, you know, in 2017, 2.4 million bucks in revenue, but guess what? He's keeping 70%, or sorry, 100% of the sale, not having to give 70% back to business apps. Well, the way that I do this is I create what's called my Starbucks process system. Now, there is no info product course you can buy for this, none of that baloney, but all it is, it's just very simple. It means we have to be able to put a process, my team and I, on one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, take it into a Starbucks and give it to a stranger. If that stranger can't read that document and execute the process, right, without any help from us, then we don't understand the system well enough yet. And the reason I do that is because the second we understand the system well enough, I can take that eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, pass it to cheap, cheap labor overseas, or a college student who'll work for seven bucks an hour, eight, whatever it is, right? And then, or, or even, I actually do it per process. What I do now when I hire is I basically say, here's the process you're gonna own, I'm willing to pay X for every time the process is executed successfully. And so these process documents, they're, it's literally, you can stack them up, Jeremy. My whole business is a stack of, call it two, three, four hundred of these eight and a half by 11 process documents. Well, Jeff, I was gonna let you keep going with the compliments. I have a great comb over, I have a beautiful, I mean, all this stuff. No, I mean, I'm, I'm half, I'm handsome picture, right? I mean, I'm half joking. Here's what I'll tell you. I was very aware writing this book that I was a white male who some people call attractive born in North America. I have advantages that not everybody has because of that. However, this book is specifically built for people that may or may not have those same advantages. They are email scripts that work. They are ways that I traded my very small Instagram following, a thousand people, to get free hotel stays on page 106. You see how I bought my first piece of real estate at 24, putting very little money down. Now it makes me $1,000 a month in passive income. The bank deal is on page 135 for that. So these are all like very practical little things. A lot of people, Jeff, saying this feels like an updated version of four-hour work week, which is very exciting. This was so funny. While we were doing that, look, my mom doesn't really know what pop-ups are. Look what she said. <laughs> Art's her husband, my stepdad. She's like, pop-up ad, pop ads for your magazine are showing up at Art's Newsfeed on the phone this morning like it's magic. I'm like, Mom, it's called a cookie. You don't eat it, and it tracks the hell out of you. It's funny that it's popping up. Now, now I have to watch if, if he buys. If he buys the magazine, I'm going <laughs> to text her and laugh. Oh, that was fun. So talk through, Nicole, but do you have like the talking points like, that you want to hit without a doubt, or you... How do you balance that? So here's my cheat sheet. What I've done with the book is I've essentially ripped out all the important pages with the actual, like the, the, the headlines with the tape page titles next to it. And so this is what allows me to actually reference a book page on air. And the reason that's important is I think when people hear that, they go, oh, I'm really, they, they're more curious. Right. They want to go flip to page six and get it. So it's I hope. That's what they used on my chemistry test in high school. Exactly. When they're like, fit as much text as you can on one eight and a half, eleven 11 sheet of paper, right? So this is my cheat sheet, and that's how I know to reference the pages, and I hope that drives more sales. But that's a big market, I think. I mean, I think the same, I think that station, I mean, you're looking at a listenership of 500, 600, 700,000 people, so it's like a webinar. No, it's like a, pod, it's like a podcast of 500,000 people. Pretty good. Really? Oh, here, you guys will like seeing this. I'll let you in on the backside of my author portal on Amazon. Now, there's not gonna be anything from BookScan yet because there's a, there's a, a week-long delay, so obviously we see zero sold, but we can do sales rank and see how we're doing. <laughs> It's pretty good. So basically, let's do this like, okay, this is all available time. It's audible though. Well, yeah, so this is audible. So 231, 368. If we can stay above. Can you go to hardcover? Yeah, but if we can keep this above like four or 500, that's like really strong in my opinion. Really good. So this is like when like a small, like this is probably only like 10 sales came in to go from 2.6 million to 116,000. 
but staying here means we're moving like a lot of copies very quickly, very fast. Explain that early part again. What does that mean? So this early part back, this was back in July of 2018, so almost a year ago, well, eight months ago. And what this means is like my rank drop, 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 and then like maybe four people bought the book. What I'm saying is to go from Amazon rank 2.6 million to Amazon rank 116,000, you really only need to drive like five sales. But to do what we've done, I just zoomed into the past two weeks, to go from you know, 12,000, 3,000, this is way more competitive at the top of the chart, right? So you know, these you're looking at, I mean, that is, that's hard. That's like really difficult. I, and I think to hold it there is even more difficult. So if we can, I'm, I'm really happy if we can stay kind of below 500 for as long as we can, you know, another two, three days. Um, we have more email blasts going out to Case at Pursuit emails today, I think. Yeah, he emails today. Mm. When does that go out? What time? 11 a.m. Central. Perfect. So at 10 Eastern time. So let's look for that. We should see a spike in about an hour when he emails. Anyway, so that's hardcover. Here's Kindle. 21, February 24th, 27,000 rank, all the way up to 1,400. Not bad. Because remember, this is all Amazon. It's not just like fiction business books. Right. It's everything. And then paperback, I didn't even know existed. I mean, that, this was just added. Erotica books may be excluded from store lever best <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can consider our book an erotica book. So that's cool. Let's go into some of these here and let's see how high we're ranking. Pretty fun. Number one, number two spot, and number five spot. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is hardcover, audiobook, Kindle. Now, these are, these are new releases. We know Paul Jarvis, Company of One, Guy Kawasaki. I love beating people, by the way, so this is very fun for me to be above all these people. But this is kind of cheating. This is like one of those bullshit like, awards because it's new release. What, what I like more is this. So this is just best sellers in entrepreneurship, like of all time on Amazon. We love how, you know how Elrod, Miracle Morning, great guy, Bad Blood, Theranos, obviously killing it, controversial Simon Sinek, Gary V, Thinking Grow Rich, I love Gary V, we love Radical Candor, Traction, boom. That's pretty cool. You mean you're above John Doerr? Sorry, Elon. Yeah, sorry, Elon. We've got Emith up here. Oh, there's our there's our audiobook too ranking. I mean, that's pretty incredible. We're above the lean startup, like the Bible for startups. We're above this guy. Look at old jokester. Look <laughs> at old jokester. I mean, this is pretty cool. That all three of our the hard thing about we're way above the hard thing about hard things with Ben Horowitz way up here. It's kind of cool to see all of our titles at 16, 23 and 36, that's Kindle at 36, Audio, Audible at 23, and Hardcover at 16, and this is for a very competitive category in entrepreneurship, so it's good stuff. That's right, it shocked me when 1.2 million people watched the first episode of Latka's Money, which you guys can see at nickmaka.com forward slash Facebook. And the reason this did so well is I went live on Facebook and I said, hey guys, I have my checkbook, I wanna go try and invest in or buy a company on the street in Austin, Texas. Ultimately, my online audience said, Nathan, go check out the Yummy Thai food truck. And Tim, over time, I learned her food truck needed some money to pay off her loan for the truck. So I wrote her a $6,000 check right on the spot, less than 20 minutes, Tim, of knowing her. I mean, a total stranger. And thankfully, it worked out. I wrote her a $6,000 check. She paid me back 75 cents per meal until I was paid back, and then 10 cents per meal in perpetuity. And on page 194 in the book, you see all the checks she's written me. So you will see I got all my money back in under 12 months, and now today I have about an 18% IRR on that original $6,000 I gave her. So it worked. No, I hate people. I hate when people come on my podcast, and it's clear that I'm ending with the famous five, and they like sneak in a marketing message. They're like, I'm launching my new info product course. Check it out at shittyinfoproduct.com. And I'm like, you just ruined the total vibe of my show. I was wrapping up. I'm not inviting you back on. I don't like that. So I think that works though. Hey, I don't want your audience to buy my book. Check out the free preview first. Go to capitalistbook.com. Almost do the opposite of what most people do. It's generally what I like to do. Anyways, five minute break. Your deal with Ming. Yes. That you get the 10 cents per um, meal. Per meal. What, if any, involvement do you have, like, 
you know, it, it behooves you for her to be better at marketing her food truck and getting more people in. Do you have any sort of interaction or do you just generally prefer to be a silent investor? So the only interaction I have with Ning today on the food truck deal is whenever I'm a little tipsy on Rainy Street with friends, I make sure I take them all through Ning's Yummy Thai Food because I make 10 cents per meal every time they order. Um, I will say the big lever I pulled when I made the first investment with Ning, I've only made one, so when I made the investment with Ning, is I moved her truck from being three back off the street to being the first on the street, which increased her foot traffic and it 3x her meal volume. So that's how I got paid back so quickly is I helped her grow her business. Hi. And how, brand new jobs. How did you do that? Well, because I knew, so the way I was able to move Ming, Ming forward on the piece of land is because I knew the person who owned the real estate. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to call him up and say, I want you to move Ning forward. Here's why. I got coffee with the person who owned the real estate because they really wanted to meet me. And I used that as leverage. So access to you is one of the levers that you get to pull because of the brand that you've built that a lot of people don't. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been funny you know, the reason I built the podcast is so that I have like, like the Indians had corn to trade. Like my podcast is my corn today. Like I trade, it. it's like a thing. It happens every day and I trade it. And so you can trade it for, put me on your email list and I'll come and have it on my podcast or you know, move my investment to the front of your lot, right? Real estate wise. And I'll have it on my podcast or get coffee with you. And so you trade this all the time. I mean, works running this with the book launch. I mean, there's literally a Google doc that we've set up called incentives so that I can give Brian and the team a bunch of ways to get people to do what we want, which is buy the book and leave a review. And based off what the team thinks the person's interested in, they will put different incentives in front of them. And so the system works. Hey, hey. Can make a legacy of capital is a really good title. So we're in the taxi right now headed towards Washington Square Park, which is right next to the New York University bookstore for the book signing. Should be a lot of fun. He hasn't? They, they do like six, eight million a year. With no systems? Like no systems. He's like, I don't have to, I've done nothing to scale myself except like some of my like It's like stuff. sponsors and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, I will help. Like, How did that make you feel? See this little bad boy no, up front. I saw it I it's in. all you. He just jumped in. All of us popping. Like, okay, let me chat with somebody and figure out where we need to go. Um, cool. Like this work. No, thank you for pulling it off because I know you got to run somewhere super quick right afterwards. So it's going to be good. This, you know, I mean, everything in, in, the, in this the country right now is going in such a bad direction, mm -hmm. in such a negative direction. And then when I saw you on, on the Fox at Mercy, I said, yes, this young man is amazing. Yeah. What are you working on now? Right now, I mainly am working on a, um, a database I'm building of software companies. Uh, I collect their data for my podcast, the top entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and then I sell that data back through to private equity firms and venture capitalists. Mm -hmm. this is so, I love that you have the magazine. That's so freaking cool. Dude, they're, it was such they're a risk. So it was such a risk, like, like popping those things out. <laughs> Mom, you would never believe this week has been so hectic. Like Monday, it's like a little nerve wracking because Tuesday is kind of go live date. And I mean, they had me go on like Fox News, the national channel, the local channel. And then after that, we're going on like CBS and Sirius. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you guys could hear me in Denver or Colorado or New York or LA, wherever you are, you heard it. And um, I'll tell you what, it was exhausting. You know, I do podcasts, as you know, like back to back to back on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I mean, this gave that a run for its money. So a lot of energy, but the team really got, I think, re-energized Tuesday night when we surged to what's called the top 200 on Amazon, meaning of all books on Amazon, we hit number 141, which we were so excited about. And we just got back some initial sales numbers are coming in very, very strong. So I get a little, I'm, I can feel my cheeks a little tingling a little bit as I say this because the Times list and the Wall Street Journal all that comes out 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I'm a little nervous to see what happens, but the book signing just went wonderful. We had a big group of people, amazing questions. People saying, Nathan, this book is gonna save our generation. Millennials can read it and get inspired again and maybe turn away from this idea that they just want everything handed to them. So the hustle's real, people want the book. I think we're gonna do very well and uh, we'll see how the numbers come in at the end of the week. Thank you.